entrepreneurs, are you feeling overwhelmed by the rapid advancements of AI and the ever-present concerns of your own data protection? The constant evolution of technology is making it challenging to keep up. Well, the stakes are high and the pressure's on. Every day, AI develop developments bring both opportunities and challenges. How do you leverage AI without <clears throat> compromising your data security? What if one misstep led to a devastating breach? And we hear about it in the news all the time. Well, hey, tune in to Profit with a Plan, where we unravel these critical issues with my guest, Myra Rolden of Undesto. She'll share cutting edge strategies, insights, and insights to help you navigate the AI landscape safely. And she'll guide us through the latest trends and must know data protection tactics. Hey, entrepreneurs, are you trying to make bigger profits in your small business? If you're like most of us business owners, increasing your profitability is always on your mind. And you're probably looking for ways to grow your revenue while growing your company. Well, you found a podcast that helps, us, helps to share ideas to help you do just that. I'm Marcia Reiner, known as the Profit Booster and a business growth strategist. I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees increased profitability, guides your growth, and plans for a future exit. Because building a highly profitable and sale-ready business creates a win-win scenario. That's more money now and a windfall when it's time to let go. And I want to share strategies that I've learned with you on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. But before we get started, I have something great to share with you. If you ever thought about supercharging your business and felt like you needed to avoid those profit plateaus, those operational headaches, or even those growth roadblocks, well, I've created a brand new Profit Booster Playbook just for you. You'll uncover the three essential strategies and the quick way to take action on them. Now, this is not just a single page report. It's filled with impactful strategies, actionable steps, and expert guidance to elevate your profits. Go download this playbook at boostingprofit.com. All right, I'm excited to have my guest on today, Myra Rolden. And she is a visionary thought leader and powerhouse keynote speaker with decades of experience in artificial intelligence. That's AI, guys. And disruptive technology such as blockchain and mixed reality. As a LinkedIn top artificial intelligence voice, she excels at demystifying complex technologies and making them accessible and engaging for diverse audiences. Myra is deeply committed to, the, to advancing and improving the well-being of communities traditionally denied a seat at the table. Well, she is also the founder of her company, Undesto, which is a boutique AI agency. Myra, welcome to Profit with a Plan podcast. We're so excited to have you on today. Yeah, thank you for having me on, Marcia. How are you? I'm great, thanks. It's it's a good day in the neighborhood, as they say. So um, I'm really excited about this topic because so many people are just like way involved with AI. And, and if you weren't involved with AI six months ago, you now have some sort of AI conversation in your space and you're now the expert, which is really crazy. But before we get started in this AI conversation, I always love to bring the audience back up and find out how you got in the space of AI. And I know for a fact it was not just six months ago, right? Yeah, it definitely was not six months ago. I have been in the space for about 12 years. And it sounds crazy to a lot of people. I had someone at a meeting uh, where I told them I've been in the AI space for 12 years. They're like, what do you mean? It just came out last year. <laughs> Uh, so it's really interesting. Um, but, you know, as with all things, I uh, have been in the tech world for longer than I care to admit. And in that time, you know, the introduction of like internet services, uh, then uh, the introduction of different technologies along the way. I think some of the more uh, recent that really had people up in arms for like AR, VR, mixed reality, and people trying to figure out like, how do we incorporate this into the business? And my question is always, well, do you need to incorporate it into your business? With AI, 
um, that's been a different conversation because now it's not a matter of like, do I need to incorporate it or how do I do it? Now it's like, it's here. Like it's, it's just here. Um, it's here with a flood, right? With a flood. Wave. Yeah. And so interesting enough, I wrote a book in 2019 on designing conversational voice interfaces for uh, Alexa devices, Google Home devices, which are AI. Mm. Uh, and so it's interesting that people don't see that as AI, uh, but it is, and everyone has it in their homes and, and they've been, and they think it, it just started yeah. six months ago. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so uh, it's just, I, I think it's just an interesting time. And my mom says it's my time to shine now. <laughs> I love it. Well, you are shining, my friend. I tell you, this is, this is such a really interesting space. And like I said, there's like, Oh my gosh, I am so amazed at the the people that were never even in the tech space before that are now calling themselves AI experts because they can write a prompt. Yes. They can ask it a question and get the answer that, you know, they were all hoping for. So I mean, I always like um, you know, take a little bit of uh uh liberty or leeway or or give them a little bit of grace when they say they're AI experts and I'm like, "Sure you are." Okay. So, um, but you, my friend, are the real AI experts. So that's why I got so excited when we met a few weeks back and bringing you on the show to talk about something that nobody is talking about, which is, oh my gosh, we're putting our valuable, important, secured information into AI to ask it to help us improve things. But where is that information going? Yes. Yes. Uh, so this is an interesting conversation. It's one of my favorite conversations to have, especially with CEOs. Uh, never fails. I'll have a conversation with with a CEO, and they're very proud of themselves because they've been using ChatGPT to help them write emails and analyze documents and write reports. And so my uh, number one question, and I don't do it to deflate them, but I ask them, are you using are you using the free version of ChatGPT out in the cloud, like on the on the internet, right? Or do you have a paid account uh, that you're using? And is that paid account an enterprise account? Um, and normally the answer I get is, well, like I'm either using the free account, you know, the free version, or I am paying the 20 bucks. And my next thing to them is like, are you putting in your company information, like company reports? company data uh, and a hundred percent of the time the answer is yes of course and because I'm, we want it to make it better right we, yes, think we have yes. to train the AI to know who they're talking about so they can talk about it more uh, better educationally better right yes yes and they could help them write an email in their voice and help them understand what their business is about the problem with that is that when you upload that data into a chat GPT or a Gemini or an Anthropic Cloud, a uh, Claude, or into any other of these systems, your information is going into a server that you do not have control over. Mm -hmm. So the cloud, uh, one of my favorite memes is like someone asks, like, what's the cloud? And it shows a picture of a bunch of clouds with a bunch of servers on it. And it says it's just a bunch of Linux servers, right? That live somewhere. Those Linux servers live in a data center that is shared with other data centers, uh, with other servers for other organizations. But when you think about when you're uploading your information, right, into a web-based application, your information is leaving your network and now it's living somewhere else. Uh, with the case with generative AI, uh, if you have a paid account, OpenAI says we're not training, we're not training our LLMs on our large language models, LLMs, on your data, but we reserve the right to use the outputs and the inputs to improve our systems and create new systems. So basically that was a backdoor way of saying yeah. we're using your data. <laughs> yeah, we're using it. Like you're putting it up on our servers. Sorry about some stuff, right? Yeah, oops. Uh, right. oops. Uh, and so it's the responsibility of the user to make those decisions as to what information they're putting out there. And if you're putting out 
your trade secrets or potentially leaking trade secrets, right? You're putting yourself at a competitive disadvantage. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm literally shaking in my shoes right now because I'm thinking anybody who's been playing in the, in the AI space and I, and I, you know, outwardly put out there that I'm dating Chad GPT because I'm on the thing so much. Um, Oh my goodness. All of that information has just been put out to the world. Now, I thought it was kind of a cool thing because one of the case studies that came back in a group that I was in was one of the girls goes, oh my gosh, I actually got a client from AI. And we said, how did you do that? She said, well, I've been grooming AI on my stuff to make it look and sound better, get my voice, you know, have it write the emails, have it write copy for my website and all the things that everybody is doing. And her client, when she asked, how did you find me? The client said, oh, I went into chat GPT and I asked who's the best one, two, three, four, you know, and it popped your name. So I looked at you, you looked good and I called you and I'm like, that's great. You made money off of it. But the real dirty secret is all of her content is yeah. now that she had kept behind closed doors or behind a paywall, right? You have yeah. to pay me to get my intellectual property you pay me to coach you pay me to train you is now out there <laughs> yes yes so that's an interesting case right uh i love that story and it just goes to show that the information you're putting into the ai system is being regenerated in different formats right because it's not spitting it out exactly as you're putting it oh, in sure there. it changes an i to a we or or yeah, you know the first so, word is not you know unlock <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the, the interesting time. yeah and i tell people like uh, tools like chatgpt gemini anthropic claude whatever ones you grok um those are large language models right and a large language model is just a text predictor. Mm -hmm. It is predicting the next line in, or the next word or a, a portion of a word in a sentence. Mm -hmm. And so it's trained on all of the internet data out there. And, you know, OpenAI was really smart on releasing it in research mode to the world. So anyone who could access it, right, had internet access and knew about it, could access it and use it. And a bunch of people just started uploading resumes and uploading business information and uploading, you know, documents. And it's just, it was just so interesting. Um, and that data was used to train these models even more. And um, which is why we got 3.5, you know, we got uh, ChatGPT 3.5, you know, 4.0, uh, 4.00, right? Um, and before that, ChatGPT was like ChatGPT 1 and 2, you know, 2.5. And, and it's going at such a rapid yeah. pace these days. It's crazy. Yeah. And so let me just tell you, so ChatGPT was a paper in 2019. It was released as a research paper in 2019. Think about oh this. Oh my gosh. How right? Fast. Think about how fast it moved. Wow. Right. Um, and we just keep on feeding it data. Mm. We just, especially personal information. Like uh, someone told me like, oh, I um, put in my birthday and my social security number. I was like, oh my God, like, what are you doing? Right. Um, because it wanted it to create like a persona for them. And I was like, yikes, you know, you have to be careful. But when it, th if you think about businesses, right. Think about, and this is my number one thing, is that I always ask businesses, like, where are you in your AI journey? Are you currently using uh, an AI system in your infrastructure? If not, you know, like, what do you, what do you, what are your plans, right? Do you have an AI policy in place right now? Do you have an AI strategy? And the answer is usually no. It's not. Look how long it takes us to get an HR document <laughs> created. Yeah, so the answer is usually no. And so my first thing uh, when I engage someone in consulting is the first thing I, I like to do is tackle. Let's tackle the AI policy and let's tackle your AI strategy. And I help them create frameworks. Mm, okay. so then they can um, kind of 
share with their employees. And a lot of times I get pushed back. They're like, well, we're not using it just yet. So like, why, like I, we could take our time and getting that policy and that for, and I, my answer to uh, these employers is usually like, okay, just because you have not integrated it into your system does not mean that your employees are not using it. Exactly. Exactly. And even if you banned it, even if your company has banned the use of AI, that's even worse. Your employees are still using it. Which is the biggest risk factor of any business yes. in any level, AI or not. Your biggest risk factor and your biggest leverage and tool for your company is your people. And yes. if your people, you know, I came out of the financial services industry and, and computers were on severe lockdown, like you basically needed a retina eye scan just to get in and see client data, but that was to protect the client data and so on. Um, but it's like, People don't realize that, that that I'm trying to do my job better. So I'm going to go into ChatGPT and see if I can improve the process or system or write a better email or respond to the numbers I'm viewing. So I'm not spending hours running a calculation. I want the answer, right? Yeah. yeah. It's human yeah. nature to try and make it. We're not cheating. We're just trying to make our job faster and easier. But yeah. the employer doesn't realize that, do they? No, they don't. And so um, I always tell employers, like, even if you're <laughs> worst case scenario, you block the use of, of any generative AI tools because you want to try and protect your IP. Great. But what's stopping your employees from emailing themselves a document to their personal email, running it through ChatGPT, and then emailing it back to themselves to then put... Hey, I didn't use my work computer to do it. I used my personal computer. So think about that. Not so there you have several security risks, right? Because one, you have an employee that's emailing personal data to themselves um, from your company. Might be protected data. You don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, two, they're sending it to their personal computer. They're inputting it into a version of ChatGPT that the uh, probably not has, paid for. Yeah, not paid for and that the company doesn't have control over. Right. So your data is, has already left your premises. It is now out in the open. And then they're emailing it back to themselves with whatever the output is and putting it into your system. Yikes. Yikes. So just like with cybersecurity, Right. Any cybersecurity employees are your humans are your number one vulnerability. Mm. And so I tell people as specifically employers is like, listen, you need to have an AI policy in place, even if you're trying to block it because you can't block it. Right. And people have these conversations them. with them. Here's the policy. You can't do X, Y and Z. And they're going to go, well, why not? Well, be well, first of all, you need education the too with the policy. I said so, which is the old mother adage, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, having that education and having those pieces out there, I think this is a huge opportunity for companies, small, medium, and large to protect themselves, protect their intellectual property, and, you know, the the probability that things can go in and out, right? I mean, I think, yeah. I think even... I think even cybersecurity is still in its infancy when it comes to the micro-sized business under 10 million in yep. revenue. They're not even looking at that. They don't even have a budget for that yet. Yeah. This AI could get them in so much trouble. Yes. Not, you know, trouble with the feds, but trouble protecting their data. Yeah. And it could get them in trouble with like regulatory agencies. Think about like protected uh, private information. Mm. you know leaking out like if someone takes a spreadsheet of customers and feeds it into a chat gpt that's a violation of you know customer data wow yeah so people wow. don't think about that you could be in total uh non-compliance when it comes to regulatory you know uh compliance issues wow okay so we've yeah, scared so the pants off everybody. There's, yeah, there's let's, so, so let's, I, I'm always a fear monger. So let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's breathe a little bit and go, okay, yeah. what can we do? Small business owners, not the big enterprise companies and the Amazons and the, and the, you know, the Microsofts, 
we just had a Microsoft, yep. you know, trouble going today, but, know. you know, in the recording, but, um, but yeah, so I mean, not the big companies, but the, the mom and pops, the, the main street businesses, everybody that's trying to do more with less, you know, us little folks, and I use that term endearing, how could we little folk in the business world, protect ourselves, protect our data and make sure everything's going, going right? Yeah, so I like to say there's there's a few steps you can take. So the first one is putting a policy into place. Love that. Um, and making sure that you are socializing the policy with your employees, having them sign off. You need to have some consequence. And, and, or, and or, yeah, enforcing it. Enforcing it. You need to have a, a way to enforce it. Two, you need employee education. So mm -hmm. informed employees and educated employees will work best because People, for the most part, don't want to harm the companies they're working for. It's not. They they're trying to, to they want to do they're doing it better. Yeah, they need they and if they know and if they're aware of the risks and aware that you know they should not be doing some things and why, they're more likely to um, stick to your policy, right? The second is to conduct a risk assessment mm -hmm. um, within your organization. So once you have a policy in place, and even before you get the policy, do a quick risk assessment and identify like, where are your vulnerabilities, right? Is it, we know that people are first, right? So that's always your first vulnerability, but look at your systems. Do you, are you office, using like Office 365 that has Copilot embedded and how, what's the use of that? And um, how much are you paying for it? Identify, um, have some data class is your data classified do you need do you have classification systems for your data do you know where things are marked like confidential private public um, that's important right having a data classification system I work with a lot of my customers on helping them develop a data classification system because they don't have one and you don't think um, about that you just think about okay it's my company it's my stuff it's going to be safe yeah. right wrong no. So having a data classification system is really important and that and the audit is, is labeling your data, like the, the files that you have, like, is it confidential internal only, right? Is it confidential external with customers? Is it public data, like, you know, stuff on your website? Is it customer information that's protected information that should be safeguarded, right? Is it financial data that should be safeguarded? Is it trade secrets? So all of that by having it all classified, and segregate it and it helps employees understand like what data can they use and can they and they can't use mm. right well and said. you put that in the policy um i would say uh looking at your security general security like of are you like is your network secure are people using their own laptops or are they using company issued laptops there's no wrong or right way there well, just not only that, food. many people are using their phones, phones. Yeah. you know, at work and it's like on the network and it's like, oh, wait a minute, you know, yeah. but you have to like, there's no way that you can secure your network 100%. So you have to be okay with the level of vulnerability that you have, right? Like the, no, you need to be okay with that, with some risk because you, no one is risk-free. No, but I. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point because, you know, we can go, oh my gosh, the sky is falling and go stick our head in the sand, or we can try and protect everything, which is the polar opposite. But I think with anything, right, if we could yep. assess and have a good knowledge base of what are some things that we can implement and what we can and can't control, then I think we're making educated decisions as business owners as to what we can afford to do, what we have to do, what we can maybe um, set up in next year's budget or, you know, start start bringing on in different ways of doing things. So I think that this conversation is not meant to scare and rattle everybody a little bit, but, you know, on, on the on the other side of it is like, there are things that we can do. Yes. And, and, and making sure that we're aware so we can make really good decisions. And, what and that's, what, yeah, that's what it's all about. It's about prioritizing and mitigating risk, right? Exactly. 
Can't right. be risk averse in this in this kind of business, yeah, right? You're, we're entrepreneurs. We we're we're risking our 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 family's livelihood on running a business. I mean, you know, there are going to be risks with that, but I think taking the ones that are calculated are are better. So you've given us two ideas. You said that we should have a policy and plan in place and and take care of that. You said that we should um, start to look at the security of the company and so on. What else should we do? Yeah, so I also mentioned the data classification. That's really important. Um, and then I would say uh, the third thing would be around data privacy and consent. Hmm. So having a data privacy policy in place and consent from your customers as to how you can use their data is going to be important. Also, it will protect you from somewhat from being sued. Right. Well, that's if you abide by the policy you set in place. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, having consent to use data, um, written consent, having that privacy policy in place that lets customer know if you are using AI, generative AI, how you're using their, their data, what data you're using, and where that data will be stored. That's going to be super important, having that data storage and data sharing um, into your policies, right? It doesn't have to be all a business and policies. It could be in your AI policy. One right. AI policy, having a data management policy in there also that um, can be accessed by um, your customers. I would say the other thing that you want to do is um, implementing some security measures. So you, if you're going to block AI, good luck. Um, Right. But if you are going to um, put a like uh, gate the access to AI in your systems, having a pop up that comes up when something someone someone goes to like a chat GPT right on their laptop that says like this is our policy. You understand that you know and you're we're monitoring the sites that you're going to blah blah blah, and they have to click OK. That more than likely will deter people. Yeah. That no no no. no yeah. Like no, hey no. hey we're watching you. <laughs> That's great. So I yeah. think that this is um this has been really good because we've talked a lot about what you know the benefits are and the things we can do. And I really like the idea that there are, and I'm sure nobody knew about this, but there are levels of protection inside of AI that will allow you to protect some of your data, like enterprise purposes, you know. Yeah protecting the data that you have and then it stays on a different server and not an open server and they've got different rules on it but we know it's out there it's hit us like a a you know locomotive train that you know just hit everybody at once this over this last year so knowing that having these policies in place of what you should do, what you couldn't do, and embracing the idea of AI because it is a really helpful tool when used properly and understanding where your data is being stored and put out there. Now that you have these awarenesses and you know that this is a valuable tool, how do you maximize it, right? How do you maximize the security, but how do you maximize the use of it and encourage your, your teams to still be on the forefront? Because the polar opposite is, is if you block it, like you said, and you say, you're never going to use AI in my company, then you are going to get left behind, like faster than you can, you know, you can blink your eyes because everybody's using it. Yeah, but I, I would, I would kind of uh, push back on that a little because okay, not, yeah, not everyone has to use generative AI. Let's just make this clear. Um, the, again, it is a text predicting system, right? It is text-based. Then we have like stable diffusion. That's an image generation. Mm -hmm. That's Dolly, um, right? Right. That's Dolly. That's mid journey. Um, we have, you know, it's not that you're going to get left behind. I think it's figuring out the use cases for your organization. Mm -hmm. Right. And being clear on when it can be used, what roles can use it, what data can be used. Right. Um, and then deciding, like, if you're going to have AI initiatives, prioritizing, where are you going to prioritize that? And then it's I, so then I you get the extreme. I'm going to share. <laughs> I always love when customers tell me, oh, we're going to just build our own large language model. I'm like, okay, so it's billions of dollars and thousands of hours to do that, right? Uh, do you have the money and the time to do that? No. What you're doing is you're piggybacking on a system, which means that 
you're going to use like an open AI. There's uh, the API for open AI that will process your data. You know, it can process data, but then it like your output is put somewhere else. Um, so what you're doing is you're piggybacking on those systems and you can do that fairly cheaply uh, to bring a system internally have like uh, some kind of you can do automations very quickly that way. Mm -hmm. um, you made sure that you're using a protected third party. I like Zapier, uh, which connects multiple systems and it's just like a, a tunnel, right? Yes. It's not saving anything. It's just like connecting two systems. Um, so looking at like, where are you going to use it? What are the use cases? And like being able to measure um, the, your return on investment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. So I'm all about measuring that ROI and figuring out like, OK, if we're going to do X, Y, Z. What is the return on investment that we're seeking from it? Like, what's the outcome? Speaking that my language. Gonna, yeah. Is it going to help us generate more money? Right. Is yeah. it going to help us close more deals quicker? Mm -hmm. Is it going to allow us to reach a whole nother market? I don't want to like return on investment, like writing an email quicker is not a return on investment, although we spend a lot of time with email. Yeah. Uh, I don't consider that a considerable return on investment that shows a profit and talking about profits, right? That will show a good profit into your business. Mm, mm. Um, writing, automating a proposal, maybe, right? There's automation software out there that will help you automate your proposals. Um, you still have to look at it. There still has to be a human in the loop yeah. because it's not a hundred percent. Yep. You still need human eyes. That's, that's the great thing about, um, you know, the, the ones that are truly successful with AI are using it as a starting point. And then they have the eyes that, you know, review it and go over it and, and correct and, and adjust and, and make, make theirs rather than just mm -hmm. producing something and shipping it out. So. Yeah, definitely. Like you can use like one of my uh, use cases, like this is my personal use case. So, um, you know, I, I write big proposals because I have, I need to give customers detail. So for mm -hmm. my proposals, what I did is I created a generic template mm -hmm. using, uh, I actually used Anthropic Claude to create a generic template. And then I brought that into my computer, right? Separate from the AI system. And then I turned that into my template. I added all my company details. I added, you know, the general stuff that isn't found on my website. Um, so I just had it like, here's my website, here's the information, fill it in, because that's public information. But then for all the other information that I needed to add, I, you know, I brought that to my computer, but it did cut down my, my process significantly. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, so there's, there's great case studies for it that, that'll make it work. I think yeah. just being aware of what it does and where it's going and and how you can protect and and ensure that you know you're taking logical risks as a as a business when using ai yeah. so yeah definitely and again it's you know it's when i tell people ai is the tool yep. it's not going to take anyone's job right now because it still requires human oversight what we are using is not considered smart ai it is it cannot make decisions on its own it cannot think critically about an issue. It cannot um, make a, dis a clear decision on anything, right? It cannot, you cannot have this AI make a decision for you. That is still a human creative, critical thinking skill. And so there are things that humans do better than AI. Mm. There's one, yay. <laughs> no, yeah. just and that's a big one. I right. know it's a fantastic one. And I think that's, that's the, I think that that's a really incredible point that we all should take in is that we're still making decisions and AI can't yet, or at least the AI that we're all using can't yet. So yeah, the um, AI, yeah, like we don't have that, like this is still dumb AI, it's still a language model. It is just spitting out, it's, uh, it's regurgitating what it's learned, nice. right? So think about, uh, you know, I remember uh, when I had to learn the Pledge of Allegiance, right? Memorize. Think about that, right? Um, many, many moons ago, you regurgitate the Pledge of Allegiance, right? You can now, if I asked you to do, you know, recite the Pledge of Allegiance, you can do it without thinking. You can regurg regurgitate it, right? right. Um, think about when you're 
learning a new task, um, the large language models operate in the same manner. Mm. They are learning constantly. They're not perfect. Um, there's this whole thing about hallucination, which is like, it's lying. It's not really lying. It's not, it's, it's, yeah, that's funny. We've we've seen Sorry. that a lot. It's where it's like, where are you going? That is not the question I asked you. And yeah. where did I come up with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not that it's lying. It's predicting. So like, you know, I tell people like, uh, think about, I wish I had a ball in here. If I were to ask AI without context, what is a ball? Right. It may come back and say, oh, it's a party. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No context. It's a party. Yeah. Where I'm referring to a ball, like, it you counts. know, a, a spherical thing that can bounce. Right. Yeah. So think about how we teach a two year old. If we gave a two year old, a two year old can tell you this is a ball and they have a context, they have a model of what a ball is. AI does not have a model for what a ball looks like. Interesting or what it is, right? So that's human intelligence that can do that. We can create models of the world in our heads where AI does not have that ability. Nice, wow. I, can okay. go, I was about to go down a rabbit hole from that I one. know, <laughs> Myra, we could talk for days on this. This has been so incredibly enlightening, valuable, and hopefully not too scary, but enough to get someone to think, oh, okay, I didn't think about that. That way I should consider doing something, right? Yeah, and that's and that's the whole idea. So you've been so helpful for this and truly, truly, truly appreciate this conversation. But where can listeners find out more about you and Undesto and how they can maybe put some pieces in place on their own? Yeah, definitely. So they can find my uh, my company website is undesto.ai and it's U-N-D-E-S-T-O dot A-I. And they can also find me on LinkedIn under Myra Roldan on LinkedIn. There aren't many of us. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm also providing a report that I created for our listeners and for anyone who goes to our website um, on safeguarding business data in the age of generative AI, where I provide you with some strategies and best practices. Um, and it's a freebie that you can download. And I'm super excited to offer that. Um, I'm also, also offering some public um, uh, workshops. So oh, cool. you can find that information on our website. Um, as we update those, there's links there. So, and, and if you're interested in hosting a website, uh, website, a webinar for your company, um, you can uh, reach out to us and we can arrange that for you. Awesome. Lots of opportunities to, to get more skills and knowledge in the space of AI. So this is great. So give us again, one more time, Undesto, spell it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, undesto.ai is U-N-D-E-S-T-O dot A-I. Uh, that's their website, the website. And then Myra Roldan uh, on LinkedIn. You can find me there. Uh, I post a lot on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm also TikTok famous, guys. So you can find me under Learn with Myra on TikTok. Wow, didn't even realize we had a TikTok star. So that's awesome. Okay, cool. <laughs> Cool. I love it. I love it. This is so incredibly valuable in a, in a time and age where things are going at hyperspeed and we really need to make sure that we're, we're, you know, CYA, right? Yeah, <laughs> we're covering our definitely. <laughs> let us, it. let us cover your AI, please. I love it. Cover your AI. There's a new one. I only went 20% for the idea. We're good. Um, but yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a perfect com conversation that needs to happen and needs to, needs to make awareness for, for us business owners. All right. Mm -hmm. Listeners, thanks for listening today. I hope you found a couple ideas that you can put into your business to ensure that your business is safe and profitable, right? You don't want to get into a situation where you're your idea, your moneymaker, right, has now been put out on the internet and made available for everybody to just type and go, oh, I want this diet plan on something or other. And boop, there it comes up. And that was all your idea that's now out in the out in the world. So just make sure you're 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 covering your AI. <laughs> <laughs> As I mentioned, how do you want to, how would you like to supercharge your business? Go ahead and download my new Profit Booster playback, playbook packed with three profit boosting strategies and the actionable steps that you can take right now 
to make this your most profitable year ever. Go grab it for free at boostingprofit.com. All right, Myra and I are going to sit on this chat here when it comes out, and we want you to tell us what you're doing. What is your plan of attack on AI? What is your strategy? The first thing that you're going to implement in your company after listening to this podcast, tell us in the chat so we can help guide you and make sure you're doing the right thing and the right priority and you know fill you with even more ideas. So hit us up in the comments and don't forget, subscribe. You don't want to miss future podcasts. You can always catch Profit with a Plan every Tuesday on your favorite podcast players. And we're looking forward to more great profitable information on next week's show. So until then, make your plans and profit. Thank you so much, Mara. This has been incredible. Thank you for having me. This was fun.